2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask for your presence right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, first I ask, ask of all for your hand to be upon Mary with your favor, your grace, and your blessing. And Lord, you keep her in your hand because we know if she's in your hand, she's in good hands. And we know that you're sovereign and you're in control of all things. And we know in it all, your name will be praised in whatever the situation is. We ask, we're asking for healing for her and we're asking, once again, for just your blessing and your favor and your grace upon her. We ask for your presence here right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I can't preach anything. You can preach all things. Help me to stay focused on what you have given your word to be declared and prepare our hearts to hear your word. Let our minds and thoughts be up on you and let us glorify your holy righteous name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we're going through these core values, once again, we have a, a, a subject that is huge, that is big, that is, that is almost like, can it really be done in one sermon? Once again, the authority of scripture. And this is even going to be tougher for me because I got to do it in 20 minutes or less. And those who know me know that I have the gift of gab. So I don't know what's going to be tougher for me to do it in 20 minutes, you know, to speak on the authority of scripture in one sermon or for me to talk less than 20 minutes. You know, I t let you know a little story. Um, those who know, I was in the military for 24 years. And, um, we, and, you know, in the military, in the Air Force, they send you to all these schools and everything, you know, to learn leadership and all of this. And one time they sent me to a school and we, uh, we had to do a group paper and group speech. And they divided us up in teams of fours, but there was an odd number. So my team only had three people. And I went to the teacher and I said, well, you know, do we get less time? Do we have to speak less time since we got less people? And she looked at me, she said, well, they got you. You speak enough for two people. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> that actually happened. And we <laughs> but anyway, let's get started. <laughs> when we say the authority of scripture, what we're saying, the Bible is the, is the only authority for truth and practice. Or some people would say faith and practice. That this is our standard. This is our authority. Now, in the world today, that's kind of not seen that way. They'll say there's no such thing as absolute truth, the world today. I mean, the, the, today, a politician, a leader, or whatever, what they do is they'll do polls and surveys. You know, they take the temperature of the room, if you will. Take the temperature of the time and try to figure out what does everybody want to do and try to go with that. But what we're saying, this is the temperature for all time. This is it. We don't, lack of better words, we don't care what everybody wants to do. It's what God wants us to do. But anyway, let's get started. First point. Scripture has authority. I can't turn my pages here. Because it is the word of God. Notice the first part of um, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Notice it says all scripture. This, everything that's in this book was written by God's hand. Now, yes, he used it through men, but it was written by God. Notice I said by God. I didn't say by Oprah, Dr. Phil. I didn't even say by CBC. I didn't say by your, you know, let's say your pastor or even your elder, no matter how great he may be. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's written by God. Now, about eight months ago, I went to work, and there was this big dispute going on between two people that worked for me. And they actually wanted me to hear that part. And, and as I listened to their dispute and everything, I really, it came to the point that I just tell them they had to agree to disagree, you know, because they weren't listening to one another. And it was a controversial subject they shouldn't, probably shouldn't have been discussing at work anyway. But I listened to what was their foundation for their points of view. One person, their foundation was themselves. She talked about her feelings. She talked about her experiences and all of that. That's how, why she felt the way she felt. The other person, their foundation was people in their life. She talked about her mother, her grandmother, and all of that. But she, uh, those sound like good foundation, but are they? 
Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. I'll give you a moment to get there. Look at verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Notice, this book didn't come from somebody's private thoughts. It didn't come from somebody whose who foundation was self. Because, I mean, even though we say self is a good foundation, but really is it? Like I said in that discussion, the, the young lady, her, part of her um, thing about self was her feelings. Can you trust your feelings, really? Because your feelings, they change. It's like a roller coaster. They come up and down, right? I mean, like, those who know me know that I work the mid-shift. You know, when I say mid-shift, I work from midnight to 8 in the morning. And some days, I have the feelings like I want to quit my job. I walk in there. I should I say I drag in there. Remember that old commercial, it's time to make the donuts? That's how I feel. Actually, I don't even care about the donut. Maybe the donut holds. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just there. So I drink my Coca-Cola and wake up. Okay, now I'm awake. <laughs> but, but anyway, so if you catch me on one day, I may feel like, hmm, I, I want this job. Catch me on another day, I may feel like, hey, this is great. Especially on the day when you get paid, right? <laughs> so, hey, this is great. <laughs> but you see, if your feelings are your foundation, it's going to change. See, this book was written by somebody who doesn't change. Now, also, if we're true about ourselves, we may put on a mask for everybody else, but if we're true about ourselves, we know we're imperfect. I mean, if you're really true about yourself, if you really tell the truth, you know you're not all that, right? So how can I base my foundational truth on me when I know I got holes? This book was written by somebody who has no holes. He is perfect, and he never changes. So self can't be it, but this book, like I said, all scripture... Uh, no, you know, knowing that the f first and no prophecy of scripture is, uh, is of any private interpretation. It came by God, the one that doesn't change and that is perfect. Now also look at verse 21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but, of, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Once again, it didn't come from a person. Now, like I said in that debate, the person was talking about their grandmother, and their grandmother probably was sweet. I mean, I don't, I don't know their grandmother, you know, and probably told her some good things, right? But could they tell her everything, right, that she would ever face in life? Probably not, because she doesn't know everything. Um, like I said, I was in the military for 24 years, and part of the thing when you get troops, you have to do this thing called a feedback. You give them a feedback telling them everything, you know, what your expectations are of them and everything. A friend of mine, you know, he, he used to do feedback. He used to do a six-hour feedback with his troops and give them this big, thick book you know, of things because he wanted to cover every single thing that could possibly go. You know, you know, every single thing that could possibly go wrong or right or whatever they could probably encounter. But true enough, no matter how much he put in that book of his, right, trying to cover everything, since he's human, there's always going to be something that comes up, right? It's going to be something that come up that he didn't even know. Well, this book was written by somebody who knows everything. Ain't nothing going to come up that's not covered. See, like I said, this book was written by the one who knows all, that doesn't change, and is perfect. So it is the word of God, so it should be our authority. Second point. Make sure the slides are working. Scripture has authority because it tells us about God. Notice the, the next part of verse, going back to 2 Timothy 3.16. And it's profitable for, for doctrine. If you ask most people, do they believe in God? A lot of people would say, yes, I would say probably 80, 90 percent. But once you start asking more questions, you'll see that the God they believe in is probably different than the God of this Bible. Right? Because if you really want to know God, you got to know his word. It's in his word that we really know his attributes and we really know everything about him. Turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 3, I mean 38 through 39. I'll give you a moment to get there.
But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. In this chapter, Christ is once again battling the, the Pharisees, right? The people who are supposed to be studying God's word, and supposed to know God's word. And here they are battling or challenging the clearest manifestation of God that the world has ever seen. Christ, Emmanuel, God in the flesh standing right before them. And what does Christ say? He, he, he appeals to what? The scriptures. Right? Because in the scriptures, we're going to know God's plan. In the scripture, it, t- it told of Christ. In the scripture, it tells us of his love. It tells us of everything we want to know about God. It's all in his word. If you really want to know God and, and, and know, like I said, his love, his grace, his mercy, his blessings, and know everything and really define who he is, you got to know it, but you got to know his word. If we don't know his word or we put something over his word, we actually go into heresy. If you just think of all the different religions and all the different heresies that uh, groups that's out there, you'll see they always put something over his word. They'll say, okay, we believe the Bible, but as yeah, interpreted by this book or this, uh, or this teaching or this counsel or this thing or this thing, this is not the final authority. And then next thing you know, you'd be like, why do they have this view of God? They have this thing of God. That's because they put something over his word. That's, that's one of the things I love about this church is this is his authority. When the elders get together, when we're trying to decide stuff, we pray. We all search the scriptures on our own or, or even, even corporately if we have to. And we always think, what does this say? When preaching. We, uh, Pastor Steve does expository preaching, verse by verse preaching. I know Romans took us a while to get through, but, but we covered the whole counsel of God, all his attributes, everything. He didn't just get on his high horse and say, well, uh, every day we go there, Pastor Steve's just always talking about this subject. No, he covered everything, preached through everything. We, when we go through Isaiah, I guess it might take us 20 years, I don't know. But, <laughs> but he's going to cover it all. That's good. That's good to know. Because all scripture, remember, all scriptures. See, to define God not by his word is to, to define a God made up in your own mind, in your own image, and not the true and living God. If you really want to know God, you got to know his word. You got to go to his word. I actually wasn't timing myself. I said, yes, I had less than 20 minutes, but oh well. We'll see. <laughs> Third point. Scripture has authority because it makes us useful for God. Notice the last part of um, verse 16 there. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Do you want to do God's work? Do you really want to be involved in the work of God and helping the body and building his kingdom and all of that? Well, you got to submit to his word. Because you need to be cleansed up. And it does help cleanse you. Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 13. Now, looking at the first part of verse 12 there. For the word of God is living and powerful. See, the word of God is living and powerful. It's living because... And powerful because God, the one that wrote it, is living and powerful. Do you know God is still in charge? He's still sovereign? You know, a lot of times when I debate or argue, whatever you want to call it, with uh, non-believers, they say, why do you believe this old book, this ancient? A lot of people, I've heard people say that this ancient book. And I I always tell them, because the ancient of days that wrote it is still in charge. Like I said, I was in the military for 24 years. My last term was in um, Kadena, right? The last four years that I did in the military was Kadena in Japan. And there, um, the, the commanders of the different squadrons, they only do two-year tour. I did a four-year tour. Well, anyway, when I got there, there was the, the other command, the commander was in charge had one year. And then, so my first year there, he was there. Then the next year, um, the new commander came in. And this new commander was the high-tech commander. 
He came in with new this, new that, new policies, new rules, new this and that, and everything. Spent all the, all the, all the money for the squadron, for all this new high-tech stuff, right? Because he wanted everything done this way, made up his new policy, so that was his work, you know, this is it. Well, my last year there, I mean, not, my, not his last year there, but my third year there, I, had, I got deployed to, um, to the desert there, to the sandbox, if you will. I come back from the sandbox, and he's gone. The other commander came, came in, the next commander came in, and did away with everything that he had put in place. Right? So his, his word wasn't living off strong, was it? Because why? A new person came and took charge. But there's nobody. God's not on a two-year tour. <laughs> Or a four-year tour. There's no new commander going to come in, come in and be like, okay, that word's no good. It's, it's, it's outdated. Now I'm in charge now. No, he is in charge. So his word is still living and powerful. Now, now let's read the rest of verse 12 here. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and, and the intents of the heart. The word of God knows us and it cuts us deep, doesn't it? Like I said, we can put a facade for everybody else and hide things, but the word of God really can get deep and really expose our sins and expose, show us everything. It's kind of like an MRI, if you will. You know, I'm a sports fanatic, so you always watch sports and you see somebody get hurt and they'd be like, well, we think this might be wrong, we think that might be wrong, but the MRI would be done so we know for certain, right? The word of God is like an MRI for your soul. It really exposes your sin and shows everything. And because of that, it should bring conviction and brokenness. Look at verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Like I said, it should bring humbleness, brokenness, because God, our sins have been exposed. Like I, said, like I said, we want to be useful for God. We got to cleanse all that up. I always told my boys, you know, Jordan and Joshua, those who don't know them, they're off in the military now. And um, I always told them, in whatever situation you're in, there's, one, there's three things I know you can always do. Repent, because if you're human, which, which we, all of us are, and they are too, <laughs> that means you're probably messing up somewhere. So repent. Obey whatever truth that you know. You know, you may not know everything, but whatever is the clear scripture that you know that you should be doing, obey it and glorify God. You can always do those three things, no matter what the situation is. And if God has exposed his sin to you, right, I mean, your sin, your sin to you, because you are his child and he's chastising you, he may take you through something to cleanse you up. Like I say, don't fight it, don't justify it. Repent, obey, and give him glory. Press on. Actually, I'm going through this pretty fast. Pastor Bob, you're going to have a lot of time. You ready? <laughs> and last point. Scripture has authority because it helps us to declare God. Like I said, we're his, we're his children. We are the sons and daughters of God. He has adopted us into his family. He has washed us clean. But because of that old dead man that's still there, we can't just do it our way. We got to do it his way. As it said, going back to 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. How many people read the, the whole 119 Psalm? The reason why I had to read that was because, if you know this, I think there's only like three or four verses, except for, except for those three or four verses, every verse is about God's word. Every verse. You see, it may say precepts, it may say commandments, it may say statutes, but it's all going back to his word. It's almost like God saying, you get the point? <laughs> To get the point, you know, think about it. the longest chapter in the Bible. It's all about this word. And, I look, and I'm just going to look at a couple verses here. And I really love these verses. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. 
Notice the psalmist says with his whole heart, he is diligently studying the word of God. He ain't holding nothing back. Do we study the word of God that way? I got a troop that's studying for um, promotion. And last, was last week or whatever, the week before, she was at the office and she, you heard her holler, I did it. And then everybody turned around and found, trying to find out what she did. And she had the, one of the books she has to study. Because in the Air Force, you take two tests. Take one for your job, then you take one for just general knowledge of the Air Force. And, she, and it was the general knowledge book, the PDG is it called. And she said, I got through it. I read it all. I said, okay, well, that's good. So you're getting ready to test. Do you remember any of it? She said, nah, I don't, I don't think I remember anything, but at least it didn't put me in a coma. She actually said that. <laughs> is that how we study the word of God? Is that it? We just trying to get through it and check it. I read it for the year. It didn't put me to sleep. That Leviticus sometimes, ooh. <laughs> And just, but cause I was thinking, how good is she going to do in that test? If that was her attitude getting through it, when she's tested, will she know? Can she apply what she studied? Same thing. If that's our attitude with it, right, when we're tested, will we know it? Can we really apply what we, what we looked at? But I think we should be like the psalmist here. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let not... Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. His whole heart. I don't think he was just reading through it. I don't think he was just going through it. Okay, now let's get, look at verse 11. Your word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I love this one because he's, the psalm is so sincere about his relationship with God. Think about it. He made a connection between, he's making a connection between God and his word. Because he knows to disrespect his word is to disrespect God. And he doesn't want to do that. You know, he said, I, I've hidden it in my heart. I'm keeping it close to me. So, so I won't bring shame to you, God. Now think about it. If your boss left you a to-do list, right, for the day, and, you know, he said, okay, Tim, do these things, right? He gave me 10 things to do, let's say. Then he comes back the next day, right, and he looks at it. I only did three of them. And the three that I did, instead of doing it the way he told me to do it, I did it my own way. How is that relationship going to be? <laughs> so, you know, we, we have to be sure to do it our way so we can hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. And then lastly, blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. He appeals to God for help because it's going to take the God to help us keep the word of God and really put it in our heart and to do all these things. Because once again, like I said, that dead man is hanging on and trying to drag us the other way. So we're going to need God to help us. Well, that's, that, that's all I have for you. And we just recap. Scripture has authority because it is the word of God. Scripture has authority because it tells us about God. Scripture has authority because it makes us useful for God. Scripture has authority because it helps us to declare God. Point blank. Scripture has authority because God has authority. If you have a problem with putting this in charge of your life when you're making decisions, when you're doing whatever, really you have a problem with the person that wrote it, or should I say, God that wrote it. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you once again for the opportunity to preach your word. Lord, continue to let us to understand your word and de dig deep into your word that we may apply it to our life, that we may declare your greatness and to this, you know, just how wonderful and how great you are. Let us never be overcome with it. Let us never put it as second nature or just flippantly go through it. Let us always be encouraged and always be on fire for you to study your word, to declare your word, to declare your greatness to this dying world that's out there. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.